thanks for checking out the Bosch and Roll channel. If you want to see your deck featured on the channel, hang out with me and the amazing Bosch and Roll community on Discord. Access to my list and sideboard guides before tournaments, or book an individual coaching session. Check out the Patreon and YouTube member links in the video description. Use the code Bosch and Roll to get 10% off the best magic apparel on the market at coalesceapparel.shop. If you want to play what I'm playing, use my affiliate link to order cards from tcgplayer.com or play any deck anytime with a Magic Online loan account from cardhoarder.com. Thanks again for being here. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boss Rental channel. Today I've got a Legacy Brew for you. This was a challenge set by subscriber Zach, who's also a local Pittsburgh Legacy Wizard. Thank you, Zach, for sending me this challenge. Zach wanted to see Land Tax as a deck. Uh, Land Tax Scroll Rack is one of these ancient pieces of technology from the earliest days of the format, and it's a pre-modern thing. Land Tax, let's start there. At the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for up to three basic lands, reveal them, and put them into your hand, then shuffle. This requires you to play a lot of basics in your deck, and you want ways to use those lands somehow, because just having three extra basic lands in your hand isn't always, like, helpful. That's where a scroll rack comes in. Two mana artifact, one tap. Exile any number of cards from your hand face down. Put that many cards from the top of your library into your hand, then look at the exiled cards and put them back on top of your library in any order. You've all seen me brainstorm after casting Life from the Loam. That's kind of what we're simulating here, but in mono white. And you can do as many cards as you want. If you want one of those lands and want two cards from the others, there you go. And then just like Brainstorm, you want a way to shuffle away these bad cards before you have to draw them next turn. Good news, land tax will just trigger again. And then you could put those same lands back in your hand, clearing them off the top of your deck to draw a fresh card, and then do this again for three more fresh ones. Very powerful interaction. How to keep up in the present day of Legacy, though. Legacy is an insanely powerful format. We got people dying on turn one to oops all spells. We've got Delver of Secrets drawing their whole deck with expressive iteration. We've got Uro. We've got Narset. Holy moly, there's a lot of cards that are really good these days. One big theme in Legacy is that the graveyard is a resource. There are very few decks that aren't touching their graveyard at all. It's like Death and Taxes and question mark like delver has murktide mystic sanctuary and dragon's rage channeler lands is a loam deck the jeskai decks have snapcaster mage or mystic sanctuary eight cast even has emery uro obviously comes out of the graveyard completely reanimator and oops all spells are graveyard based combo decks I guess Show and Tell doesn't care much about its graveyard, and the Epic Storm doesn't care much about its graveyard, but Ad Nauseam Tendrils does. Rest in Peace just hits a wide swath of the format in a pretty annoying way in Game 1. So Rest in Peace is a central part of this plan. But Rest in Peace doesn't win a game. It just slows down the opponent. So we're slowing down the opponent to get Land Tax online, to get Scroll Rack online. I've got Ghostly Prison in here. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each attacking creature. Slow them down. Oblivion Ring and Swords of Plowshares and Wrath of God and Solitude are all in here as removal spells. Again, slowing opponents down. And then actual ways to win the game. We have a small number of them. Helm of Obedience combos with Rest in Peace. If you're not familiar with this interaction, four mana artifact, X tap, target opponent mills a card then repeats this process until a creature or X cards have been put into their graveyard this way, whichever comes first. If you X equals 1 with Rest in Peace in play, the card is exiled, so no creature or a card will ever be put into their graveyard, and Rest in Peace plus Helm of Obedience exiles your opponent's deck for 5 mana. Pretty good deal, pretty quick way to end a game. Helm of Obedience, one of those in the main deck. Karn the Great Creator, just... Insane magic card in general. It can wish for another Helm of Obedience. There's one in the sideboard. Ooh, I just realized I forgot to put a uh, liquid metal coating in the deck. That needs to be there. I went for all the big flashy things and did not include the most basic one. I'm going to cut a Mind Break Trap. We're going to be soft to turn one anyway. We'll just do our best to survive that long. Okay, Karn. 
can get the other Helm of Obedience. The second Helm in the sideboard can be grabbed by Karn if you have Rest in Peace set up. There's also, for the memes and the lols, but I also think it might be good, Goblin Charbelcher. If you have land tax pump in over the course of a long game, you might not have any lands left in your deck, and Charbelcher could get the job done. This can win a game even when you don't have Rest in Peace in play. Kind of like having access to that. And of course, Mike's and Lattice, if you find yourself on a stable board, you can just lock your opponent out from doing anything. Also in the Karn package, the liquid metal coating I just added, if you find yourself in a slow stable game where picking off their lands one by one is a way forward, that's a great one to get. One Trinisphere, I borrowed this from some technology. I did a lot of googling and checking goldfish results from history of technology. And the original cut of this deck that I put together had the four Mox Diamonds plus two Chrome Mox, and it had three Trinisphere in the main. That's also kind of why Ancient Tomb was in the deck, because I was trying to do Trinisphere faster. But I decided that I kind of wanted this Isochron Scepter as a fun of to Enlighten Tutor for, and you can get a lot going with Orem's Chant, or even just tucking Swords of Plowshares under it. could be a pain in the ass for a lot of decks. I that's another way to move towards an endgame. And Isochron Scepter is very bad with Trinisphere because you have to cast the copy. It doesn't just appear on the stack. You cast it without paying the mana cost, so it costs 5 mana to put something out of Isochron Scepter. Rough beats there. So Trinisphere is in the sideboard. We can wish for it if it's the appropriate thing to grab. The rest of the sideboard... Or let's finish the main deck first. The only card I haven't mentioned is Court of Grace. This is another way to win a game. You can Enlighten Tutor for it. It's four mana. It only works on a, a stable board where you're ahead and your opponent can't really attack you, but it wins the game very quickly once you're in that position. Between this and Palace Jailer, I went with Court of Grace because it can be tutored for, where Palace Jailer can't. In the sideboard, I have a lot of ways to try to not lose to combo. Deafening Silence as a two of, Containment Priest as a two of, and Other Sworn Cannonist as a two of. Just get the sampler platter of people can't play spells cards in there. Baneslayer Angel, another old piece of white stacks technology from the ancient times. Sometimes just a, a big lifelink idiot wins the game. Protection from demons too. Get right in front of Grizzlebrand. Good luck with that. <laughs> give me give me some Baneslayer Angel action in this league. And my own spice, because I wanted it, is Armageddon. Lands is a strategy in Legacy. The Bant decks, the Jeskai decks, there's a lot of decks that are trying to hit a lot of land drops and just overwhelm you in that regard. And Armageddon, like if I know that this is coming and my opponent doesn't, I can tuck some lands in my hand with land tax. I got Mox Diamonds. I can power this out with Ancient Tomb. Like This is a pretty sweet card, especially if we find ourselves in a situation where like I've Trinisphered and then Armageddon and then the game just ends. That just seemed like a sweet one to have access to. Actually, now that we're down to one Mind Break Trap, I'm probably going to add another Armageddon. I guess that's... Now we're in, like, the deck building weeds here. Figuring out the last sideboard slot. Armageddon would be great against, like, Death and Taxes as well, if they don't have Vile. I mean, like, there's worlds where Geddon just ends the game against DNT. Having one Mind Break Trap, I'm never going to mulligan to that, and it's really hard to cast. I would need two Mox Diamonds involved. Oh, I think the right answer is just Ensnaring Bridge. That's boring, but I think it's right. Yeah, and Ensnaring Bridge in the Karn package, that's a way for Karn to brick attackers, just support your ghostly prisons in a way that's a little more, a little harder to break through. And very few of your win conditions involve attacking. So I, I think I'm going to, I need to get one from Card Hoarder. I don't have one in my collection to just pop in right now, but it will be Ensnaring Bridge as the 15th sideboard card when we move into this game which it's time to do right now zach this is mono white land tax i'm gonna go for it let's play this out i'm on the draw in round one and i have turn one ice run scepter with enlightened tutor under it is that a world i want to live in i think so i'm gonna keep this obviously you'd prefer opening hands with land tax and mox diamond in them but uh i could get a mox diamond with this Enlightened Tutor if I want. 
this uh, Bloodstained Mire start is probably going to be bad for me. Decks that are on the up and up don't play this card. <laughs> they just pump the fist so hard. They're like, oh, some bullshit deal. I hope they take my scepter and leave me with my tutor. But tutor is very clearly the correct card to take here. And the tutor is gone, to the surprise of nobody. Let's do something better. From the top rope? Oh, that's not it. Okay. Um, I could turbo out this helm, just play the Ancient Tomb. I think I want to do that. If this is Reanimator, there's a world where, like, I could just take one of their monsters with helm in, like, the way this card was intended to be cast. As Garfield intended. Oh. Volcanic Island. All right, so this is some, some storm. I'd love to find an Orem's Chant right about now. Land tax. Okay, uh, we've probably lost, but here's a land tax at least. They're not going to have a creature for me to steal with Helm. <laughs> going to have to hit it old-fashioned way. If we get a turn at all. Naturally, we would uh, cut the Mind Break Traps at the last second and get paired against Storm on the first try. Good shit. Luckily, the Epic Storm isn't really known for going off on turn one. It used to be the turn one deck of the format, but now it's kind of much slower than that. Like, it can still do cool stuff on turn one, but it's much more known for, like, Galvanic relaying, chaining them together, investing in the future with Wishclaw Talisman and that kind of thing. There's also a deck that could just decide not to play a land if it doesn't want me to trigger a land tax, and it wouldn't hurt them too bad. At this point, I'm just hoping they kept a slow, grindy hand based on the fact that they're playing against me. <laughs> like, oh, Bosch and Roll. Some control deck. All right, they went for the land drop. I'm either dead or I'm getting a bunch of lands out of my deck. To what purpose? Nobody knows, but I'm going to have them. Also, the Epic Storm doesn't play Thoughtseize, so this is probably Ad Nauseam Tendrils or like some hybrid thereof. Like, Wishclaw Talisman these days is in more than just the Epic Storm. Wow, that feels good to put three cards in your hand, even if they are all lands. And you draw another land. Good shit. Okay. Um, under what circumstances does Helm die? If one or more creature cards are put in the graveyard this way, sacrifice Helm. Okay, so you do actually have to hit a creature for the Helm to disappear. I'm going to put Helm into play, because if I top deck Rest in Peace, I want to be able to win. Okay, uh, they just passed priority on their upkeep. They pondered last turn and didn't... They didn't shuffle, so I am going to mill this top card. This is like my one shot here to actually meaningfully impact this game. Watch Echo of Ian's hit the graveyard right now. I can't wait. Okay, they did not shuffle the ponder, and then they did not crack their fetch, so they wanted this card. They wanted this Reign of Filth. That was my read on that situation. I've done what I can to mess it up for them. Given that I've seen 13 cards in this game and 9 of them are lands, you got to find these tiny little edges if you want to compete at all. But Reign of Filth did just knock a bunch of mana out of their potential mana pool. But it also brought them one step closer to Cabal Ritual, but Reign of Filth would have turned on Cabal Ritual's threshold anyway. So, yeah, I feel good about that. May still lose the game on the spot, but I feel good about it. Reordain, all right. We got a cantrip again to try to figure it out because they messed up your plan. Top, bottom, the Preordain. Okay, <laughs> Dark Ritual, we're just dead. All right, it's only a matter of time. But we had the Isochron Scepter and enough mana to activate it and kick Orem's Chant if we needed to. Like, Chant would have been great. That's why Chant is in the main deck. It, it's one of the, the outs to combo. Not a lot of things you can do in Mono White short of, like, going full stacks, which are all in the sideboard, but Orem's Chant kind of plays in both scenarios, whether your opponent's attacking or s storming. Okay, we got a uh, Infernal Tutor without... Sacking LED, so they have to search up a second defense grid. I wonder if that was a misclick, or if they wanted two defense grids in hand. I can't believe that's the case. Yeah, no way. You know I'm mono white. You know I'm not doing anything. Yeah, just discarded the two defense grids. Lost the, lost the tutor for no reason. I'm probably still going to lose. Like, Pass in Flames just still does the thing here. Yeah, Pass in Flames, Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, Infernal Tutor, Reign of Filth. Yeah, yeah. You're doing just fine. I would like to point out to the Peanut Gallery, though, that a Rest in Peace or a Orem's Chant would have won this game. But we went with Adnaz. Do you not have Past in Flames or not interested in it? Because 
It was deterministic if you have one. Okay, we've got a burning wish, two LEDs. That's also deterministic. The floating red, the one in the pool, LED, LED. And because I tapped two ancient tombs last turn, you don't even need 10 storm, but you have it anyway. They did not hold priority correctly last time. That's my out right now. I'm just hoping my opponent fucks up. Okay, they, they know how to do it this time. All right, cool. Tough matchup. Didn't draw anything helpful, though there were a lot of live hits there. We knew that one would be bad, though. Talked about it in the deck tech and everything. Deafening silence and other sworn cannonist coming in. I think I just want Trinosphere in the deck. Arn already, like, fucks pretty hard if he just shows up. Just null rod mode is really good. Uh, ghostly prison, I don't think matters. I don't think I'm going to get my warrens emptied, though. Ave progenitor ooze is a thing. Uh, sword to plowshares, that's the bad one, for sure. And solitude, also pretty bad. Is plow better than solitude? Uh, Wrath of God's also bad. Oh wow, there's a lot of bad cards in this deck. Um, how do I want to address that? I could put Tormod script in over Wrath. Got my piles backwards here. I don't think having Lattice in the main deck matters. Armageddon's probably going to hurt me more than them. Could put in Containment Priest just as creatures that attack and block. I think having creatures that attack and block is probably better than Wrath of God and Solitude. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay, let's go. On the play, <laughs> Land Tax Ghostly Prison, that's not it. I'm going to mulligan pretty aggressively in this matchup. That'll do. All right, keep this and put planes on the bottom. I think I just want to Orums chant them. Do I want to do it in their upkeep? Because I can Orums chant and then Enlighten Tutor for Deafening Silence. Yeah, I'm just going to chant in the upkeep. Target player can't cast spells this turn. That'll be you. There's Underground C. That cannot do things. And I'm going to Enlighten Tutor for Deafening Silence. Start turtling up here. Deafening Silence. Draw for turn. It's the deafening silence. Surprise. Okay, let's see if that will buy me the time that I need. Feels bad, but I mean, this is the matchup that we knew we were going to be bad against. Thought ceasing my rest in peace. Okay. Trinosphere off the top. Let's go. Planes. I hope I get thought seized again. My silence didn't get chain of vapored in the end step. I'll take that as a, a W. Plan go. Come on now, deck. All right. We're officially out of land tax range. And the scary thing here is unless I come up with, like, Karn, they really don't need to do anything. Karn off the top. Oh, no. There's so many planes in this deck. Ponder. Okay, that's your spell for the turn. Breathe a sigh of relief, folks. We're going to get another draw step. Goes to shuffle. Hell yeah. All right, come on. Hate peace. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dave Progenitor Ooze is not going to connect with me, my friend. There's an Echo of Eons in the graveyard. That was the, the discard. I'm going to keep his planes in my hand. I don't really need a sixth planes, and leaving them... Like, I've cast one Orm's Chant already, letting them wonder. Like, make them respect it a little bit. It's worth doing. I don't expect them to Echo of Eons, because I'm, like, hellbent over here, and they've been sculpting their hand the whole game, but it would be cool if they did. Uh-oh, didn't shuffle the brainstorm. Terrifying. Ponder, cool. Deal, 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 deal. Every draw steps a chance to draw Karn. Or other sworn cannonist, or like something that can give me another layer of protection. Ancient Tomb. Okay, I'll put that one into play. Our shuffling this Ponder. Well, they shuffled the actual Ponder and then also fetched a land. I don't know if we're just in like desperate thinning mode or what. Bottom, bottom, the preordain. Yeah, they just don't have it right now. They're not sculpting. They are desperately digging. Come on, Karn. Ooh, hell yeah. We're attacking and blocking now, folks, and have a second layer of protection up. And I'm just stubbornly holding onto this card in my hand. Fetching again. They just bottom, bottomed preordain and then fetched, shuffling the two bottom cards off preordain back into the deck. I don't think fetching actually increases your your chances. Like, you pulled one bad card out of the deck and shuffled two bad cards back into the deck. Alright, now I'm in trouble. They need to get through Canonist and D-Silence. 
Oh, and Oblivion Ring. All right, now it's starting to happen for me. Attack for two. Start reducing that life total. And Oblivion Ring. Eat your Wishclaw Talisman. Yoink. <laughs> Duress. Yep. It's a planes. Has been the whole time. Got him. Okay, now I can play that planes out and draw Karn. Draw Karn. All right, I'll just play the planes out. That dress could have been a final check. I'm trying to think of like what they can do with one spell that clears both of these hate pieces. That one of them's an artifact, one's an enchantment. Uh, bottom, bottom, the preordain. We love to see it. Karn. Oh, rest in peace. I'll take that too. That cuts off uh, Aston Flames as a line, and their life totals pretty low for ad nauseum at this point. Also makes Cabal Ritual worse, no matter what they're doing. Got rid of the Echo. All right, Lotus Petal. Hey! The Daddy Father is here. Father Reno. All right, so I have six, seven, eight, nine mana. What's in my sideboard? Uh, there is a coating. Oh, there's a Helm. Four, eight, nine. Yeah, that's the right number. Oh, wait, but I can't cast two things. That's right. Okay. Um, all right, they're just conceding to Karn anyway. Yeah, Karn was just going to plus on Lotus Petal because I don't get two spells anyway. If there was an artifact creature in my graveyard, or in my sideboard, I could have still cast that because Desilence stops non-creatures, which is Karn, and Canonist stops um, non-artifacts, which is also Karn. Okay, that... uh. That Ghostly Prison was pretty embarrassing. I think just having Baneslayer in the deck is something that can attack. Though Solitude can also attack and is an instance, which can play off of the... Oh, well, I have two Ghostly Prisons in the deck. I think it's fine. Okay, Baneslayer and Solitude are back in. There's ways to actually win the game. Okay, let's, let's do this shit. We're on the draw this time. This is the scary mode. I'm also on Medium Tilt that I forgot to get the sweet Art Orm Chance from Card Hoarder. I got the original arts of everything else and then just forgot on Orm's chant, so we have this stupid moto version. Okay, uh, chant and a hate piece. Let's see what happens on turn one. Hands don't get better than this. I'm keeping it. Opponent went to six. Snap kept seven. Live in fear, opponent. I'm exactly the type of deck that you're pretty happy to just jam a turn one echo, see fresh seven cards off of. And force me to have a fresh seven that I can't mulligan if it's bad. Our bad lands. And what do we got? Am I getting my thoughts seized? I am. Okay. So, Ethersworn Canonist is the scarier card in this hand, but Orem's Chant can buy me a turn to get to the Canonist. Let's see if they're planning on acting on turn two, or this thought seize will just give me a lot of information. If they take Orem's Chant, I get to slam land tax, which I'm not going to do if they take Canonist. I think Chant's just going to be more important. Look the Chant. Okay. Time to draw Deafening Silence. Rest in peace. Okay. Well, land tax time. Let's go. Am I dead, opponent? I love this containment priest in here. Just 2-2 two -two flash. Ooh. Opponent skipping their land drop. Oh, the, the Bean Slayer. And skipping their land drop makes sense because that just blanks land tax forever. Like, unless they get up to three or four lands later. But the Canonist is in play now. Pretty happy about that. Did have the land. No surprise there. Mox Diamond. Uh, that's kind of dope. That moves my mana forward without playing a land. So land tax could trigger if they play another land here. And it does not upset Others Weren't Canonist if I do this. This is an artifact spell. Discard the planes and play Rest in Peace. Rest in Peace is better than Containment Priest. Like, Priest doubles the clock, and ending the game is something we're going to have to do, but Rest in Peace is actually a, a lock piece, which is much more important. Okay, here's what's going to happen. They're going to play a land. I'm going to trigger land tax. Then I'm going to draw Mox Diamond and cast Bane Slayer Angel. I'm so ready. There's the land. And we're getting a land tax trigger. Pay your taxes, opponent. Put three planes in the hand. 
load them up. Show me that mock diamond for Vane Slayer. Oh, Orm's Chant. That's so much better. Okay, I'm going to attack for two. And then I'm going to cast my Containment Priest. Because I don't get both of these if... Like, uh, Canonus doesn't let me flash in Priest and play Chant. And I want the ability to do both in a turn cycle. Erks, McJerks. Okay. That's pretty good. I can respond to most annoying things with Orm's Chant. Or I could just Chant in the upkeep and turn it around. And do more. Uh, like, Worm's Chant also turns off Thought Seize, which, like, Thought Seizing the Canonist might be part two of this plan. And with Canonist out of play now, they could brainstorm in the end step. They could do something that they couldn't do a second ago. I think I'm just going to chant them in the upkeep. If this was a slow uh, picking apart of things, I'm going to punish it. And even if it wasn't just a guaranteed Canonist back in play, Another turn of attacking. All that sounds good. And like I mentioned last game, the diversification of some of my things are enchantments and some are artifacts is really great because that Hercules recall left rest in peace behind. Oh, chain of vapor. We're we're moving all the way in. I am not going to send that back. Yeah, if you're going to spend both of those, I'm just going to chant. Let's go. Sometimes Storm has Flusterstorm in it, but sometimes it doesn't. And my opponent seems to have thought seize in their disruption slot. So you can't cast spells this turn. Next turn, I'm going to redeploy all of the things you just bounced. Let's party. And that's two answers out of the deck. I don't know how many they might play, but I'm going to put it back in. And it's interesting that they spent the effort on rest in peace. That means they are planning on going through the graveyard, or at least wanted it available to them on this turn. Man, Orm's Jan is so good. Draw for turn. Tormod script. All right. Mox Diamond, get back in there. Discard the planes. Play rest in peace. Let's get that handled. The pieces are rested now. Uh, I'm going to attack first. In case there's some sort of like pirate cannonade or something. That's not a card that Storm plays, but I'm just thinking about like magic cards. I would like to make sure I get my, my damage through. Uh, here's Canonist. And for good measure, I'll play the Tormod script. And I'll play the land, because Baneslayer's coming, baby. All right, big moves here. Did you have Baneslayer Angel as sideboard tech for Storm and your bingo card today? Okay, here's Burning Wish. Whatever's left, they can get. Massacre's pretty good, but you got to wait a turn to cast that. And it doesn't kill Baneslayer. Or Deafening Silence. Shit. Definitely Silence is so much better than Bane Slayer Angel right now. Uh, I'm disappointed that I drew that. But they're going to massacre me here and think that they have time, but they don't. There's the massacre. Okay, it's gone. However, will I provide pressure on my opponent now? Fear does not exist in this dojo, does it? No mercy. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and I'm floating a card in my hand. Just make him think about it. Maybe I'll sniff out another duress here. They've already been blown out by Orm's Chant once this game. There's a Preordain. They can maximum get three more spells this game without removing Deafening Silence. Bottom, bottom, Preordain. And when Baneslayer connects, they're going to need to come up with three extra Storm to actually win the game. It's cool having a Legacy deck that deals zero damage to itself. And I have the Ancient Tombs that did come up in game one, but it's turn eight. Haven't cracked a fetch land, haven't cast a thought seize, none of the above. You just don't do that here. And Bane Slayer Angel takes down Storm in the year 2022. Timmy is everywhere, rejoice. On to the next round, we're undefeated. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop and be sure to use the code Boston Roll for 10% off when you check out. I'm on the play in round two against Andreas. M Mueller, Mueller, I think it's Mueller, who has revealed Yorion, and this is also a known, like, famous Death and Taxes player. I'm going to keep my hand. Turn two, Karn. Slaps pretty hard against uh, Aether Vile. I'm just going to, I'm going to do that. I could get Wastelanded here, but I'm prepared for that world. If I get Wastelanded, I just play planes and hold up Swords of Plowshares for the next one. Ooh, this is... Oh, this might still be taxes, like Red Splash Taxes is a thing. But it could be some other million card deck. Who knows? 
All right, confirmed, not death and taxes. Some sort of zenith nonsense. Uh, I could still jam the car in here, or I could plow. I think I want to plow. Just take this effort to, to slow him down. Let's me play around days next turn as well. Oh, JK, here's a wasteland. My lands, they're so wasted. Uh, Mox Diamond, I could Karn right now into Force of Will. I could also set up Rest in Peace this turn and cast it next turn, working towards Helm. I could also play Helm right now if it resolves. Oh, that's actually big. Uh, I'm going to play Helm now because I can just turn the corner and win next turn if Helm's in play. And it's not as bad as Karn if this gets forced. Okay, let's see how this goes. This is also a deck that's going to have creatures in it, so I might actually just spike some value off the helm if I have to play it fair. Exiling my Mox Diamond, fair enough. In that case, I am not going to Enlighten Tutor because I can't cast the rip. All right, now it's Karn time. Just flushing for uh, forces here, and I can still put together the rest in peace out of nowhere next turn. What's in my sideboard? I think I want the liquid metal coating here. I could grab the mock diamond out exile. That's funny. Not helpful, but funny. Grabbing coating. Okay, we've got three mana. What are we going to do with it? Zenith for two. Is this collector oof? That would be annoying. Probably is. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to enlighten tutor for an oblivion ring. I can grab the Oblivion Ring, remove the Oof, cast the Ring, get Oof out of here, and I can attack for four all the same. Like, I, I could do that even if the Ring didn't happen. Get in there, Helm of Obedience. That was a good Oof, though, because that meant they didn't die immediately to Helm. Knight of Autumn, tight. Killing the Oblivion Ring unlocks the Oof. That's pretty good. These are some good cards to have in your 80 card deck. Gotta say, congratulations. Okay. In the car and sideboard. Time to. I think it's just time for ensnaring bridge. Grab the bridge. Play bridge. And sandbagging force of will. You got me. All right. Extremely well played. The life total. I don't know if that was drawn or if uh, they just had everything else beat and ignored it but yeah field knight of autumn in hand can't imagine you have many of those in your deck uh wrath of god isn't out there's a couple of those in the deck ghostly prison what's up yeah let's slow it down oh come on you have force negation too okay coaddle that's fine okay only one of these things can attack each turn and that's if you don't do anything else wasteland that's fine Going to use the Wasteland to attack or to deny me stuff? Using it to attack. Cool. Light and Tutor. All right, that. What does that do? I could get the Oblivion Ring. Turn my, my creatures back on. I'm going to cast it and see what it comes up with at least. It's going to be a two. So, uh, I'm out of luck here. We've got nothing. Okay, so I'm actually not going to tutor. Oh, I could get a second. Nope, I'm at two, and there's four mana, so second Ghostly Prison doesn't help. Can't even cast Wrath. Yeah, there's nothing I can do here. All right, yeah, uh, just picked apart by some well-timed or conveniently present cards here and there. That was a really close game. Good shit. Cool deck. Baneslayer Angel. Armageddon, for sure. Containment Priest against the Green Sun Zenith. Very interested. Also Yorion. Uh, I like the Solitude. Court of Grace might be a little risky. Isochron Scepter is pretty risky against uh, what they're doing. Worm's Chant probably isn't great either. Especially if I'm boarding out Scepter. That card just gets a lot worse. I can use Chant to set up a combo turn. Like That's a thing. But probably not where I want to be. Okay, I'm just going to cut another chant. There's one still in the deck. Oh, on the draw, land tax is a lot worse. I'll cut two, or on the play, land tax is a lot worse. The place that I am currently. 
Uh, I'm going to put in more chance on the play. Okay, let's do it. Okay, uh, this hand's pretty good. I'm going to keep it. The land tax is awkward, but I have tax and rack. I can skip a land drop at some point to, to go off. And if you want a prismatic ending land tax, that's fine. I'll just hit my land drops. This also punishes Zenith for zero really hard. I hope that happens. Show me that Dryad Arbor. Give it to me. Great mana. Disappointing. It's fine. Got land drops to make anyway. Roll rack, get in there. Alright, having two removal spells in my hand is nice. Uh, getting completely clowned by oof game one. Don't love it. Okay. Um, do I want to rack here? Can they punish me racking here? Yeah, I'm going to rack. All of the exile and draw happens in one movement. So, like, I can't like commit four cards, then they flash in a Hallbreacher or something. Like I would see the Hallbreacher before any of that happens. Definitely don't want this scroll rack. Oblivion ring can wait. Really, all these cards can go away. I want to keep the land, make sure I hit my land drop. All right, scroll rack on the bottom. Solitude. Ooh. Uh, Solitude and Oblivion ring under it. Storm's chain on top. On another scroll rack. All right, I'm just going to sandbag this Wrath of God for a minute. Seems like a good card. There's the Coat. I hope they spend mana on my scroll rack. It's prismatic ending it or something. I got three of them here. No such luck. I know... What, three of my top cards right now? I'm going to try to rack again. One, two, three, four. And I know one of them's a plane, so I'm just going to get rid of all these cards. There's Rest in Peace. That's a card I can actually cast here. Scroll rack on the bottom. Mox Diamond under it. Uh, the Orms Chant in the middle. Wrath of God. Ancient Tomb on top. And here's Rest in Peace. I don't know if my opponent uses their graveyard, but it's gone now. We doing something in the end step? Endurance. Okay. Wrath of God looking tasty. I hope they like cast Leovold or like I guess Leovold kind of blows me out because I need to rack for the wrath. Oh no, I don't. I have four mana. You need another color of mana to get the, the Leovold in anyway. Knight of Autumn. Okay. Are we beating up rack or rest in peace? Rest in peace. Got it. Field of the Dead. Okay. I was not prepared for that. Maybe I should have been. I'm just going to cast Solitude here. See if it resolves. Get rid of this Endurance. Before they untap into 5 mana and cast Force of Will. Not interested in that. Wasteland. That's fine. Sure. 4 mana is mostly all I need. Zenith for 3. Um, I think I want to rack in response in case this is Leovold. Okay. Resolves. Gotta hope Force Blue card are not in the hand right now. Ramon up Excavator. Okay. Yeah, I'll trade. These are all going to die next turn anyway. If I have my way. Uh, maybe I should O-Ring. Nah, fuck it. Wrath of God. Let's go. The original Alpha Magic card. Cast and Ponder. Okay. Hope they needed that ramming up. They had already used their land drop that turn, so didn't get any value off it up front. Pretty happy with that. There's a land drop all the same. When a growth. Uh, we could be moving towards Yorion here. Uh, Grist, okay. Build an Abundant Growth, which I think they knew was there from Ponder. Alright, Scroll Rack. Let's let's move some cards around. I'm going to keep the Oblivion Ring. I think I want to get rid of that Grist. Oh no, it's all bad now. Racks are just picking up more racks. I think I knew all these cards, though, if I was paying attention. Exile Grist. This is falling apart on me here. Uh, I have not gotten any hooks in where I need them to... None of my combo pieces are lined up. The scroll rack is just spinning its wheels empty. And Yorion is looming. The Seiju. Okay. Uh, I would like to search my deck. That's great. That shuffles up the scroll rack cards. I'll take it. Oh, Gris just plussed putting Life from Loam in the graveyard. Just million dollar play right there. Birds to Plowshares. Going to scroll rack. And I'm not going to plow any of these creatures, so we're just going all the way in here. Oh, great. Found all my plows anyway. 
And I guess I'll save this to plow Yorion. I'm not going to make a land drop because I might need these cards to rack with next turn. Are we dredging Loam? Getting Besaju? Blowing up my scroll rack? Build Tropical Island? Life from the Loam targeting Wasteland, Besaju, and a Misty. Let's see if they want to blow up my scroll rack. Looks like no. And no two of these cards. I'm going to chuck all of the other four away. All right, Ghostly Prison and Wrath of God, both pretty good. Uh, Besaju messes that up, but Besaju messes everything up. I think that's the first test I want to test with, though. This messes up the insects, like Besaju destroying Ghostly Prison, giving me a shuffle, letting me rack again. It is pretty good. Grist is at five. There's one, one two, three, four creatures in the graveyard, so they can zap me for four with Grist. It's not quite lethal yet. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Not quite dead. The Seijude, my ghostly prison in the end step. Loam picking up Tundra, Taiga, and Misty. Uh, not interested in the Besaju, apparently. Probably going to spend all their mana this turn. Is that what they're indicating? One, two, three, four, five, six... A uh, second land. There's two lands with the same name in play, which is why I'm not in the Field of the Dead yet. I am drawing wild, but continue finding the same cards. Roll rack. I think I am going to have to Wrath of God here, so I'll just do the other three. Court of Grace. Oh, so close. Wrath of God. They have so many cards in hand. A bunch of them are lands, though. But Force of Will is available on the hard cast if they want it. And five, six. I'm going to hold on to this land in case I need to rack next turn. But there's a fetch land in hand, which one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, now that Dried Arbor is gone, the fetch land in hand is not enough to go into the Field of Dead. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, we're an Omnath deck. I'm not beating this. Lessons here. The Storm opponent last round is doing a hyper linear thing that is exploitable by Hateful Permanence. A 80 card Green Sun Zenith four color control deck is the exact opposite of linear. It's anything could come out of anywhere and mess with me at any time. And that's what we're seeing now. The Abundant Growth and Omnath are gonna draw extra cards on the way in. I still think we caught kind of the cold hand of the Magic Gods with that uh, game one Night of Autumn, but we were never in this game too. Uh, I guess I could. Uh, Oblivion ringing Yorion seems so insane. All right, I'm going to plow Omnath. Just try to get that out of the way. And Oblivion ring. I think it has to be Yorion. Though the Besaju in the graveyard can immediately unlock that. But I think that's okay, because that gives me a shuffle. All right. Winging a prayer here. Dredge Loam. There's one, two... Three, four, five, six creatures in the graveyard. Grist can blast me for six. Now they're in the field of the dead, off of the Dryad Arbor. The Seiju's in the hand as well. Milled Prismatic Ending with Grist. I know my top cards, I, I'm pretty sure are Scroll Rack and Mox Diamond right now, so I should take a draw before I do anything. And now just rack my whole hand. Don't even know what I'm looking for here. I think I'm just out of luck. Barn Containment Priest. Uh, maybe Containment Priest can do something, but I'm just dead to so many things. And a mana short. If this Mox Diamond was a land, I could Karn and try to make something happen. I guess I could Karn and get Tormod's Crypt, which at least shuts down some of this stuff. Okay, Karn, get in there. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, force of will on that. I'm dead to the board and dead to everything. Okay. Yep, just picked apart by the, the non-linear toolbox deck. They had a tool for everything. And we never got a hook in at all. Just solid removal and card advantage from the opponent. Unrelenting. On to the next round. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the play. 
in round three with kind of an awkward one. Orm's Chant, Double Wrath of God. I don't think this is where I want to be. Mulligan. Okay, this one I like. I'm going to keep this and send... It might be land tax to the bottom on the play like this. And just in the, the powerful legacy format. I think holding up Orm's Chant, pulling up Swords to Plowshares, and just trying to find a way to stick this Court of Grace is a pretty solid plan. A Tropical Island and a Ponder. You got it. Decks that contain Tropical Island and Ponder are like Bant and sometimes Storm. Okay. Another Plains. Line me up. If I can get to turn four and go Orem's Chant Court of Grace to punch through counter magic, that's a plan. And I have Swords to Plowshares to survive the next turn. Uh-oh. This bug mana base is feeling pretty stormy to me. But I have the Orem's Chant for that too. Let's see how this goes. It would honestly be a huge relief if they just, like, cast the front half of Uro this turn. Just take the storm pressure off of me. Baleful Strix. Okay. I'm going to switch the Plowshares that. Just because it is literally any creature. They're probably pretty happy with this exchange. This would be the most heads-up, fucked-up Force of Will I've ever seen in my life if they protected that thing. Okay, I'm going to Orms Chant my opponent here. You don't get spells this turn. And then I'm going to become the Monarch. Flooded Strand can't fetch Dryad Arbor, which would be the thing I'm worried about here. Okay, Monarch achieved. And I hope you don't have a Haste creature. Hope you don't have a Narset. Hope you don't combo kill me. All right, we're getting angels, folks. We're in Angel Town. Population me. All Breacher would be kind of annoying, but I still have a bunch of angels. We got that going. Monarch trigger. Okay, cool. We're in there. Swords of Plowshares will help protect the Monarch. My hand is just full of removal. Really hope this is a creature deck. Okay. There's that. Uh-oh. Snapcaster Mage. This could be a problem. Please don't have Force of Will. Oh no, I'm losing the Monarch. It's okay. I still get a 1-1 one, one every turn that can tangle over the Monarch. They're going to draw extra cards, but I'm going to try to slam through it. I'm going to have to deal with a flying creature every turn. Shit. <laughs> All right. We're getting beat by real decks with real spells. Like removal and flash creatures. This is bullshit. New plan is to deck them. Which is always kind of the plan in a twisted way. Okay, I'm going to make it their job to answer the spirit token every turn. I'm not going to wrath to clear the snapcaster. Jace, pretty powerful. In concert with the monarch. Just going nuts over there. And these four color control decks. They're so good. Just have all the good spells in them. I'm going to Armageddon the shit out of this opponent, though. Him to Tarak. Good luck. My hand's bad. Taking two Wrath of Gods. Hell yeah. I was just talking about how I'm not going to cast those cards anyway. No way I'm blocking this attack ever. Oh, another Snapcaster. Okay. Okay. They plowed my creature before blocks. Didn't even give me the opportunity to trade, which I was not going to do anyway. All right, deck, let's start getting the combo together. That's not the combo. That's a fucking planes. There's so many planes in this deck. We have high highs and low lows here on the Bosch and Roll channel. The turn four protected Court of Grace on a stable board against a blue deck into the drowning to Jace the Mind Sculptor, and also they are the Monarch. Him to Turok, take my Mox Diamond. Wasn't using that. Don't worry about it. Assassin's Trophy on my actual court. Disappointing. I would like a planes, though. My deck's good at those. And uh, the fourth f sword supply shares of the game? Is that right? Or is it the third? The third. Yuck. Okay. Gotta deck them somehow. These are too many planes. And having seen him to Turok and Snapcaster Mage, I'm willing to play out these lands. Oh, maybe with Scroll Rack in my deck, I need to hold back lands that are bad. Okay. Yeah, I don't have high hopes here. Oh, Jace is plusing. That's what's going on. That's why my draws are bad. I haven't even noticed Jace plusing the last two turns. My opponent's like, whatever, you're dead. Let me have Karn, which means they have a counter spell in their seven card hand. No surprise at all. Okay, I'm dead. Oh, that was exciting for a moment and then fell apart underneath me. Planeswalkers, huh? Those are good. Okay, what do I want in the main deck? Armageddon, I like. Uh, Snapcaster Mage. 
I could bring in my containment priest to tangle with that, but I don't think that's how I want to do this. This is probably a good deck to Trinisphere against. Like Trinisphere, Armageddon. <laughs> the classic combo. Uh, Wrath of God seems medium. I like the Solitudes a lot. I like Ghostly Prison a lot. Rest in peace. Isogron Scepter. On the play, land tax is a lot worse than it wanted to be. Do I want Baneslayer Angel? We saw Abrupt Decay and Swords of Plowshares. Those are both tough cards. Tough sell. Oh, I'm cutting Wrath of God. Just added it to my sideboard in package. So two cards out, or three cards out, two cards in right now. I can get my Containment Priest in just as like something to, to get scrappy with. I don't really like Baneslayer at the top end here. I'm going to cut the other Wrath of God, too. Though, do I need four Orms Chants in this deck? Probably not. I'm going to cut one of the Orms Chants. I'm going to leave in the Isochron Scepter. That's pretty sweet. All right, let's do it this way. On the play, uh, we got Trinisphere. Um, I'm going to keep this. Rest in Peace does look good against the Snapcaster angle of the deck. I would like to hit lands, but my deck has proven that I'm good at drawing those. Turn 3 Trinisphere is a lot worse than turn 1 or 2 Trinisphere, I gotta say. There's a Ponder. Hit the land drop. Easy game. Rest in peace, get in there. Shut down those snappies. They are still 2-1 creatures, though, which is regrettable. Him to Turok missed the Trinisphere. It hit the Court and Oblivion Ring, though. Try to make this shitty for everyone. Alright, they had the land. Do you have another him as well? All Breacher? Okay. I'm going to source the plowshares that right now while I can. Burrow. All right, that card goes directly into exile. Fetching. For unknown reasons, there's a Trinisphere in play. Nope. Nope. Uh-uh. Untap it. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think I'm over here spending three mana on nothing. Just literally nothing. I don't think plow is what I want under this scepter. I'm going to hold out for a chant or a uh, enlightened tutor. And the Trinister is making all of it pretty bad, honestly. Snapcaster Mage, Ambush Viper. You got it. Uh, they can now hardcast Force of Will. Don't love that. I'm going to plow this in the end step just to spend my mana. Worms Chant, okay. Uh, we're a long way off of this being actually good. But an Ancient Tomb gets me there. Oh, hell yeah. Nobody's allowed to have any fun. Three mana Brainstorm in the end step. Go for it. Fetching away the brainstorm, they don't like it. Six mana, I'm in trouble. Teferi, no! Don't even need to bounce Scepter, it's non-functional with Teferi in play, but you got it. The land tax, yeah! Pay me! This is a good target for Force of Will. Alright, didn't do that. No! It's not fair that they drew so many lands! You were the chosen one, Anakin! Looks like I'm getting him to Turok here as well. <laughs> Leaving the Isogrunts after with nothing to pitch. Alright, what are you going to name with this? Spirit? Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I would have named. I mean, I am technically a combo deck, so I should keep playing. There are individual draws that can be difference makers on this board, so... Let's, let's play it out. Got a lot of time to work here. Huh? That's one of the guys. Um... Here's Karn. Opponent has two cards in hand and five mana up. Karn resolves. What does that mean? Uh, I could plus putting Trinisphere... I could attack Teferi with Trinisphere. Unlock spells for the turn. Oh, that seems really risky. Trinisphere. So Trinisphere is uh, hurting me more than helping me at this point. I don't think I want to wish for my spell just yet. Maybe I just plus on nothing or... Yeah, they're a discard deck. That sucks so hard. Uh, I'm going to make the swing here. I'm going to attack Teferi. This turns on Swords of Plowshares. To, uh, they could have already abrupt decayed or Assassin's Trophy. Like, go for it. But leaving Karn at maximum loyalty, challenging the Teferi. I like all these things. And Trinisphere is not doing me any favors at this point. Okay, abrupt decay. That was going to happen anyway. That's fine. Karn is chilling at 6 loyalty. A land off the top gives me an opportunity to win this game. Teferi could him to track me in my draw step. And if, they've, if they're clutching onto a discard spell of any kind, I'm in trouble. Um, 
I could cast Wrath of God here and plus Karn. Just buy myself some time. Actual Wrath of God. All right, I'm going to plus Karn targeting nothing. I just want him at high loyalty. I don't want, like, a Snapcaster Mage to deny my, my victory. Petty Theft. Annoying. Shit. Petty Theft turns into Brazen B, which puts Karn in the graveyard. Or at two, where he's not super helpful. Disappointing. Karn's getting soft over there. The fairy bouncing Brazen Borrower, that's smart. That's another bounce spell. Keep you alive from my combo. How oh, did you find him to Turok also? Oh, Thoughtsies. All right, I'm losing my rest in peace. It's getting worse, going from bad to worse over here, team. And there's the land that would have been the helm last turn. Okay, what can I do in here? I could grab Char Belcher and just start uh, zapping. I'm losing Karn anyway, so I should use it. Uh, Ensnaring Bridge. They have the Petty Theft, but like if I can loop it around and, and make noise with it, like it might buy some time. Okay, I'm going to wish for the Helm. I don't want the Trinisphere out of Exile. I'll take the Helm. Make my land drop for the turn, play Helm. And I might be able to zap my opponent with it. Pick up a little uh, Ice Fang Coatl action. All right, I'm milling them in response. If this hits a creature, it also fizzles the Petty Theft, which means they don't get the Brazen Borrower. We're fetching in response. Didn't want me to have whatever they had. Oh, Baleful Strix. Fizzles Petty Theft. No Brazen Borrower for you. That was awesome. That was so fucking sick. The nuts. Not how I wanted to use my Karn, but awesome play. Glad that one's on camera. No one would believe me. Uh, if they have another Teferi, they can bounce this Baleful Strix and draw a card off it, though. That becomes dangerous. Uro. Oh, that's a good card. And a fetch land. Okay, so Uro's arriving immediately. Cool. Rest in peace. Held the fort for a long time, but I think we're about to, to fall apart here. Okay, I'm going to leave Strix in front of Uro. Hope I get some action out of this, but their deck has a lot of removal in it. Okay, I'm dead. The Uro, the Teferi, uh, attacking. Uh, I just can't get this together quickly enough. I wonder if I should have more Armageddons in the deck or or something, because we just like got out-muscled by two four-color control decks in a row, where I don't have a great way to punish greedy mana bases with my mono-white deck. When I was doing my research, some versions of this deck did splash a single mountain plus the, the Mox Diamonds that they play and a Blood Moon in the Enlightened Tutor package. Maybe that's worth doing. It gives up the, uh, the mono-white dream, which was part of the appeal for me. But these, uh, these greedy mana decks just going off with impunity against me has been pretty disappointing as I run basic planes into play. Food for thought as we move forward. On to the next round. I'm on the draw in round four against my dude, Joe. This is the person who I helped shape up their uh, reanimator show and tell deck. So I know I'm against combo. Oblivion Ring's good against show and tell. Orm's chant could buy me some time. I mean, I'm going to keep this. This is a good time to be a main deck rest in peace deck. We'll see how much time I get. And I convinced him to add Thought Seizes and Brazen Borrowers to his deck, so <laughs> that's going to hurt the matchup. Oh, there it is. I suspect the Oblivion Ring to go. In Orm's Chant, nope, neither one of his combos really depend on doing two things in the same turn. Like, you can Entomb, I Orm's Chant in response, then you just reanimate next turn, and Show and Tell is just one spell anyway. If I chant in your upkeep, you just Show and Tell the next turn. I would probably take Oblivion Ring, knowing what I know about his deck, but uh, Land Tax has a lot of text on it. I might be able to confuse and surprise an opponent with that. Went with the chant. Okay. Let's see if that pays off. I'm going to play my Planes and my Mox Diamond, discarding the other Planes, and get Land Tax in here. The Brazen Borrowers are in the sideboard, to my knowledge, so... I don't think Diamond's going to get punished, but Axe is my only real play this turn. If I can find a Rest in Peace to go with this Oblivion Ring, I'll be feeling really good about this whole situation. Like, that's Plan A and Plan B both answered. Uh, I get to do my thing. 
Joe said in the chat, well, you get to do your thing. My thing is putting three lands in my hand. Oh, that actually kind of fucks. Uh, I'm going to play Ghostly Prison. He's not a Daze deck. That makes... At least slows down both of the things. There is a Shallow Grave line in his deck. We actually beat it uh, with the four-color Control League I recorded recently. He hit me with an Emrakul, killed all my permanents, put me to one, and then I... Or put me to two, and I rallied back. Okay, we're going again on the land tax. Okay, we get to check trigger land tax twice. Land tax drew six cards. Check that off the, the bucket list. Come on, scroll rack. Ox diamond, all right. Uh, he knows about ancient tombs, so I'll play that. And I'll get the mox diamond out there too. Might as well. Uh, opponent knows about five of these planes. I have one mystery card, but it's also planes. And the oblivion ring is also technically a mist, or it is known. It is not a mystery. All right, we're getting intuition here. Hell yeah, we are. This deck kind of sucks without a scroll rack. <laughs> this, this would be so hot if I could just have six new cards. I'd like to see three show and tells here and pay out this oblivion ring, but since it's not a surprise, there's probably going to be like a reanimation package here. Yeah. Emrakul the Promise End. I don't care if you reanimate that very much. That one's best if it's cast. Archon of Cruelty. I think I want to give him Grizzlebrand. Because I'm more worried about... Like, I'm better set up against uh, Show and Tell than I am against Reanimation. Okay, you can have Grizzlebrand. Yeah, because, like, I basically have to measure what am I least scared of being reanimated and what am I most scared of being shown and told. And Grizzlebrand having the immediate answer to it if a show and tell happens in Oblivion Ring, you still get to draw a bunch of cards either way, but at least, like, it's immediately removed. Okay, Exhum. We're going to see Archon here. Luckily, I have many planes to discard. Oh, Emrakul. You don't... Oh, unless you also have Reanimate. Oh, yeah, okay. That makes sense. I was going to say I don't really agree with that one, but yeah, if you're doing two things, story checks out. Okay, deck. Now's the time to do something good. <laughs> oh, call the police. All right. I'm. He knows about this Oblivion Ring, so I'm going to go for that. Draw out the Force of Will. Oh, no, that just resolved. I'm a little disappointed. Um, okay. I'll take the Archon. And can I afford to take 13 from Emrakul? Oh, that sucks. <laughs> All right. I, I was so ready for a counter spell there. I'll take 13 from Emrakul. I can Wrath next turn, just in case he puts a second thing into play. I also guess I shouldn't have tapped Ancient Tomb. There was no reason to do that. I have plenty of white sources for my Wrath of God, even doing the, the other one first. Yeah, that's basically a tap of Ancient Tomb I don't get later. Enlightened Tutor. Okay. Uh, if I get another turn, this will be good. Wrath of God. Brainstorming in response. Okay. And... Ah, oh, I had the Force. Okay. Yeah, that was either extremely well-sequenced. Uh, like, I guess... It's kind of flawed going for the Oblivion Ring first because I'm still losing to Emrakul. Like, it's a bait spell that it's not even that tempting bait. Yeah, I might uh, I'm willing to believe I messed that up, like, on an actual strategy level. Okay. I'm getting my Silences and Containment Priests in here. Solitude is good. Uh, Swords to Plowshare is kind of fine. Land tax on the play, get skinnier on that. Probably want Canonist as well, just like anything to slow him down. Rest in peace, didn't show up at all, that's fine. I'm gonna cut a Wrath, I'm gonna cut another land tax. And Swords of Plowshares is like pretty good against his build, but it's not really what I want to plan for. And Solitude is pretty cool. Uh, because I helped build this deck, I know that most of the reanimation spells are exhumed, so being able to just chuck a creature in the graveyard for free is pretty big, if there are graveyards to chuck into. Snaring Bridge I'd rather have in the Karn package. Tormod's Crypt I want in the Karn package. We could have Bane Slayer Angel staring down Grizzlebrand here. 
That's a good thing to put in off show and tell. Just clown a grizzle brand. That's funny. Okay, the other Wrath of God is gone. I just have more hate now. I don't need that much. And I don't really want Trinisphere because I think that the efficiency of my plows and E-Tutors and stuff are going to be better than actually shutting him down. He's a pretty slow, stable version of combo over there. On the play with Containment Priest and Deafening Silence. Yeah, we keep these. I think I want to just guard the Ancient Tomb to the Mox Diamond. Guard Ancient Tomb, play, planes, and Containment Priest is better than Deafening Silence on, on turn one here. Priest shuts down both halves of the deck, and you need Brazen Borrower or Force of Will to deal with it. I'm going to Priest in response here. Like if he doesn't have Force now, I don't want him to find one off this Ponder. And if he does now, I want him to have fewer options of cards to pitch. Okay, that's pretty dope. We're in there. He has some number of Omnisciences in the deck, which uh, circumvent Containment Priest through Show and Tell. Did not shuffle a Ponder, but a land. Arms Chant's pretty cool, too. Deafening Silence, get in there. Just slow you down and attack ten times. That's my plan. And Solitude's pretty good. In for two. Pitch casting to Solitude is still casting, so that's not going to mess with Containment Priest at all. It's just an alternate casting cost. There are Eliminates in his 75. It's kind of funny playing against somebody you know three times in a row and just removing their Brewer's advantage by knowing what they're doing. Kind of corny, but... Okay. Um, this seems like a good time to Enlighten Tutor. Do I just get Scepter? Just got him in a scepter chant. That's really bad against Brazen Borrower. I think I'm actually just going to draw a card. I found a land. Like, Containment Priest is already managing graveyards. And I have Solitude that can answer something if something breaks through here. I'm going to Enlighten Tutor for Oblivion Ring in the end step, I think. I don't know. I'm going to Enlighten Tutor and see if it resolves, and then I'll make a decision. But Oblivion Ring covers Omniscience, which is... The remaining scary card. I am in land tax zone, but I don't think that's the play. Oh, Other Sworn Canonist doubles up on protection while adding to the board. Oblivion Ring is bad against Thoughtseize, especially when it's face up like this. Oh, Canonist also bricks Omniscience because none of the monsters that would come out of the hand after Omniscience are artifact creatures. Yeah, that's a good force of will. Pitching Brazen Borrower, okay. Glad to see Brazen Borrower go. But I am a little worried. I could have Orum's Chanted to make sure that resolved. It forces the spell for turn, though. Okay. And Brazen Borrower is just good against the strategy in general. The bad news bears for me. Thoughtseize, bummer. Alright, let's see if you value Solitude over Orum's Chant. The Thoughtseize takes a turn off the clock, which is really... All that I'm asking for at this point. I thought he's to nine attack to seven. Grizzlebrand can't draw cards anymore. Min, I'm interested. Another planes. I hate giving him perfect information, but if I draw another land next turn, I do want to be able to cast my solitude. So, and it is. Heads up, seven up. All right, we're just passing the turn. Punished. Mox diamond. Yeah, when you board out land tax, Mox Diamond gets a lot worse. Maybe I should be boarding those out as a package. Okay, opponent's at five. Reanimates off the board. Drawing cards with Grizzle Brand is off the board. All right. Rolled up against Show and Tell now. Got a plan. I can't put in Solitude off of Show and Tell because uh, Priest will exile it. So if a Show and Tell were to be cast, I would simply... Now I'm going to put in Oblivion Ring, but if it had happened on a previous turn where I only had Solitude, I would just not do anything. One is a three going to discard. This could be a monster, but if it is, they got to deal with priest. Okay. Enlightened Tutor is good. It is a white card I can pitch to solitude if I need to. And it can tutor something if I need to do that. All right, go. Here we are. At one life, it's time for the flourish. The final flourish. Oh, that brainstorm is probably game ending because... He had to remove Priest in the end step and then do something on his turn, and the Brainstorm uses up one of those spell slots. Like, now you gotta kill Priest and go off from 3 mana on your turn. Unlikely. 
Okay, coast to coast with Containment Priest. I called it on turn one. I said I'm going to attack with this ten times, and that's what happened. Let's look at this sideboard again. And I might just want Ensnaring Bridge in the main deck. It's a spicy thing to put in off of Show and Tell. On the draw, I want some land taxes back. That is a pretty important engine. Like we saw Mox Diamond just sputter and fail. And Scroll Rack would have been a bad draw, but land tax changes that. I'm still going to shave the Mox Diamond. I don't need to go super fast here. Still dubious about Source of Plowshares. So Isogrand Scepter is a big risk against the Brazen Borrower deck. Okay. We did not resolve the problem of Ensnaring Bridge. Do I want that in the deck, or do I want a Karn for it? I probably want it in the deck. In place of what? One of these Orms Chants? Chant gets worth, worse without Scepter. Okay. This makes sense to my brain. Oof. Uh, this isn't going anywhere quick. Two Karns, pretty nice though. Uh, I am not soft to Thoughtseize. Ghostly Prison's good against low resource games. I think I got a mulligan this though. Okay, I like this one way better. I'm going to keep this in bottom one of the Ancient Tombs. This is a very spicy deck to just cold activate Helm against. And I got a plan for Thoughtseize. Like, you can't mull to a perfect four on the draw against the Thoughtseize deck. Then you have a bad three. Here's the Thoughtseize. Took the plow. Okay. That indicates that the creatures currently on the, the docket are plowable. Probably Archon is the most likely one. Because the other creatures in the deck are Grizzlebrand, Emrakul Big, and Emrakul Small. Could also just be on that Brazen Bar or Beat Down Life. And a Ponder. Okay. The second Ghostly Prison is pretty nice. Like, hanging out on three lands is not going to win him this game, which is where the last two games ended. AGC. Yeah, you know me. Ghostly Prison. Hell yeah. And that doesn't give away any information. All of those cards were seen. A redundant copy on the card or what he doesn't know. Brainstorm? Well, hidden land drops. Land tax is still alive. And a ponder. Saw a lot of cards this turn. Could still thought seize me after all that. Did not shuffle, kept the ponder. Okay, I think going for Karn and grabbing Tormod script is the way to go here. This is like a really scary thing to have to force. And if it resolves, the game will end quickly. A show and tell next turn would put another ghostly prison into play. And without more lands may or may not actually be able to attack me. This one black being held up right now could represent Entomb. Okay, Force Pitching Force. Arn is in the crapper. We have Entomb Reanimate as the last two cards in hand. Uh-oh, it's time for the show. I'm going to put in another Ghostly Prison. Let's, let's keep this ghost in the moon where she belongs. All right. Helm of Obedience, get in there. Uh, I am currently... At one to a land. Did not make a land drop last turn. These two ghostly prisons are currently holding. But I can mill five cards over the next turn cycle. Uh-oh. Oh no, you better fetch before you attack. Oh no, oh no. Are you allowed to fetch here? I mean, technically in the rules, no. But like Magic Online lets you go to attacks without letting you crack your fetch. That's just one of those like shitty rules things that you don't know until you're in it. But I guess it would just become... I think it'll just back up if uh, you refuse to pay. Because, uh, like, it's not like destroy the creature if you don't pay or some cost. It, it's like it literally can't be in the red zone without paying. So I think it just backs the game up, like illegal attack and, and backs you up. The Emrakul's on tap now. We are navigating this together. Oh, yeah, I think he's stuck in declare attackers. Yeah, this is one of those things, no opponent in real life ever, if you're just like, I'm going to attack, fetch, and pay for it. What I guess the most rule sharky rule shark on Earth might shoot that, but no normal person with a, a thinking mind who wants a fair game would say anything about that. I'll just play the game like I'm at one. Maybe not. <laughs> uh... Feed the swarm in the graveyard. Oh, yeah, let's get rid of that. I guess I get a whole extra turn here. Um, all right. Helm 
right now doesn't really change anything. Yeah, I should wait for attackers to be declared. Okay. I, I'm not going to play the game like I'm at one. I'm going to hold him to it. This is a brew. I need every little squeeze of possibility I can get. All right, actual land and play now. Okay, four mana spent. I get to helm for four. Try to spike a uh, an archon is the best one. Here we go, one at a time. Oh, uh, four cards in the graveyard. None of them are archon. Okay, I should be dead here, but uh, we get another swing, another five cards, and rest in peace just wins it. Oh, Orm's chant on queso. Uh, that means can't attack or cast spells this turn. He just said, in our hearts, you're at negative 12. Uh, I agree, intellectually. But I'm out here with Mono White Brew, and we are going to play this out. Let the chips fall where they will. All right, I'm going to kick her, con queso. One card in hand can't be force of will. If it is, then you won't have mana to attack, and now you can't attack anyway. I wish the rules worked such that I could make make you pay for ghostly prison and then do it, but that's not how the rules work. All right, give me that archon. Three cards. Brazen power. <laughs> no, <laughs> betrayed. Betrayed. Uh oh. Uh, I mean, brazen borrower. Uh, Emrakul has trample. Got me anyway. The sideboard brazen borrower. You didn't know it was in here for padding against helm of obedience, but it sure did that. Yeah, Emrakul has Flying and Trample, and I only have one Toughness. GG. I played the extra turn, and it wasn't good enough. I do think trying to spike one of the monsters, like uh, other Emrakul wins the game. Grizzlebrand buys me a turn, and Archon also wins me the game. But, like, trying to keep your Helm back in case you spike Rest in Peace, I don't think that's the line. All right. A tight one, and Joe finally got one on me. On to the final round. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop, and be sure to use the code Boston Roll for 10% off when you check out. On the play for the final round, we started out strong, and then ran where I might expect with a deck like this. I'm going to mulligan this. It doesn't actually do anything. This one is much better. It's kind of the same hand, but does things instead of doesn't do things. I think I'm putting Solitude on the bottom. That's just a 5-mana spell when I have the 1-mana version already in my hand. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of that. Like, Helm gives me a spike opportunity to end the game suddenly. Opponent's on 5 cards already. Let's see what they are. Most of 5 are usually people doing unfair things, like Lotus Petal decks. Let's hope this Orem's Jan is a blowout. I'm actually like pretty into Echo of Eons right now. Jamble. Okay. Um, Gamble puts Echo into the graveyard. I'm going to let this happen. And then I'm going to Orem's Jan in response to the Echo. All right. You can't cast any more spells this turn. Let's get fresh sevens and see how this looks. Rest in Peace is very good against the Epic Gamble. This deck rules, by the way. I played it on the channel a little while ago. I highly recommend it if you like insane magic. That's also good. Land tax, real bad. Opponent, no lands anywhere to be found. I do think Rest in Peace is better than Orem's Chant here, but I could get punished by that. And the one-up main deck Helm was in my opening seven and is also in my follow-up seven. Okay, here's a Lion's Eye Diamond. We didn't get Burgied first. Diamond, this could be a Galvanic Relay. It would be a pretty solid Galvanic Relay uh, defense grid. That's good for next turn. I was planning to chant them. I mean, Spirit Guide Exiled, where are we going with this? Just a big Relay? Or is it Burning Wish for Pure and the Abyss? Because that also gets me. There are seven mana in play. Yikes, that was a good seven. Okay, my opponent's going to peer into the Abyss here. But without a graveyard available, it might get a little more challenging. Floated red off the first LED. Might go for Galvanic Relay instead, which I think is a mistake. But I also missed Peer into the Abyss when I played the deck. Counting to seven is hard. And I don't know what the plan is after you count to seven if your LEDs are all in exile and you can't keep going. So maybe there is some discipline lay down here. I don't know. 
Okay, yeah, they did stop with one LED, so they're going for relay. Oh, nope, empty. Makes perfect sense. That's so much better. Uh, I That takes two turns. Yeah, relay is better than empty, but peer might have been better than both. Oh my god. So you're saying there's a chance. Planes, Mox Diamond, Alm of Obedience, Opponent's Hellbent, go. <laughs> oh no, don't, don't spend mana, what are you doing? Stop it. Stop it. Let me deck you. Okay, I go to 8. And... Opponent has Defense Grid in play, but I'm still going to Orms Chant them for good measure. Chant. Can't cast spells this turn, just in case. And then... I will exile your deck, please. Helm you for one. The, the mill one gets replaced 49 times. Your deck's in exile. See you later. And we got a helm kill, finally. Mono white, respect it. Apparently we can only beat storm decks. All right. Um, Canonist and Deafening Silence in for sure. Trinisphere in for sure. Containment Priest, still not great, but still does attack and block at instant speed, and there's a lot of removal I need to cut from this deck. Uh, the Wraths, hilariously, would have actually been really good there. Uh, if my opponent... Like, Epic Gamble doesn't go for empty very often. Like, sometimes they board in a bunch of empties and go for, like, a fair plan without resorting to tutors, but if they end up tutoring, it's usually... Uh, the game is already over. Okay, uh, land tax is bad because my opponent just barely has lands in their deck. Mox Diamond gets worse when land tax gets worse, though against this speed, having Rest in Peace or Others Weren't Canonist on turn one might be important. I do like Solitude as an instant speed free way to interact with Bergy. Gotta cut something though. Uh, Ghostly Prison. Oh, Ghostly Prison is better than Wrath. It does the same thing, but costs one less and is tutorable. A lot of plows still in this deck that I don't like. Also just Karn, four mana Karn, one-sided Nullrod, pretty much blanks this deck. I think some of the plows are going to come out. This deck could get susceptible to a Scepter Lock. Oblivion Ring can take out a Defense Grid or Bergy. Ghostly Prison in an Emergency, Court of Grace if I find myself on a stable board. Yeah, I'm not bringing in Bane Slayer here. Okay, let's do it this way. I have Orm's Chant and Canonist. No second land to turn one the Canonist with. I think this is a keep, though. I'm likely just getting Echoed on turn one anyway, so I don't need to be too picky about my opening seven. Breaking serve and winning game one is really important because uh, being on the play is unlocks all of my interaction, where on the draw I have close to nothing. Like, any land off the top gets me Canonist. I could use Mox Diamond to play Land Tax. That's actually sick. That just, like, guarantees that my opponent plays even a single land. My opponent is on a Malta 3, though. I'm just watching the chat as their hand gets smaller and smaller. They're going to have to turn one Echo to do anything this game, I think. Oh god, two cards. Are we just going to get away with a, a non-functional Mulligan here? All right, they kept two. Is it LED Echo? Oh yeah, it is. Let's party. You love to see it. Good job, opponent. Okay, we're both back up to seven cards. This hand doesn't have Canonist, but does do most of the other things my first hand did. For Monolith, Mox Opal, Rome Mox. All right, there are more fireworks to come. Pitched Echoing Truth. Rome Mox on blue is kind of awkward. Oh, I have the Ghostly Prison, but they have so much mana. Oh, that doesn't matter. Uh, one goblin is a lot less. All right. Uh, an ancient tomb off the top just spikes this game somehow. Oh, I can Orem's Chant into the next land drop. Rhinosphere, shit. All right. I'm going to play Plains and play Mox Diamond. Discarding the Plains. My opponent only has one land. Land tax. Going to be punished. Okay. I'm going to Orem's Chant Conqueso in the... Upkeep. No spells, no attacks, please. And hope to draw land. Either way, this is going to get me another draw step. Whether it happens now or a turn after that. Ugh, punished again! 
These cursed mox diamonds. Probably just going to plow a goblin to save one life. Because if I hit the land here, that's going to be one turn. That works for me. That wouldn't have worked for me before. Every life point matters right now. And with Ancient... Oh, they have Chrome Mox as well. I was going to say with Ancient Tomb as their mana source, they take more damage than I do during combat. Void Snare, oh no! Uh, cursed Existence. Uh, alright. That was really close. Uh, just missed a land drop and would have stabilized. But Void Snare would have just beat me anyway. Never mind. I was dead to Void Snare. Okay. Lost on the Mulder 2. Now we get one on the play. Uh, maybe Ghostly Prison is better than advertised. That empty came out of the hand, right? That was not a Burning Wish. Land tax is bad on the draw, unplayable on the play. As much as I don't like Mox Diamond, I still think it's necessary for speed in this matchup. Okay, let's do this. On the play with nothing to start here. A mulligan. There we go. I will have your silence. I need to find something to do with this hand, but I am definitely going to keep it and send one of the planes. Okay, planes, Mox Diamond, discard planes, and deafening silence. Hopefully that's a problem. I ran out the Mox Diamond in case I do get echoed this turn. Like Void Snare LED Echo just does the thing, and in that case I, I want to dump out as much of my hand as I can. I have Oblivion Ring if, if Bergy occurs here. Right, that's not a Bergy. Do I want to just ring this Chrome Mox? I think I can do better, like a Bergy or a Harnfell. We can do it. As tempting as it is to turn Oblivion Ring into Mind Rot, just take these two cards, the Chrome Mox and the card that came with it, out of play. I think we can do better. Burning Wish, okay. Going to be wishing for Void Snare here, probably. Setting up a next turn situation. Oh, Echo in hand, okay. That's a ways away as well. All right, I'm going to stick with the Planes strategy. I am going to hit the, the Chrome Mox. If you're setting up an Echo and missing land drops, I'm just going to cut that out from under you. There's LED. Next turn, can Echo. Oh, Enlightened Tutor. Teasing me. Add this E-Tutor. If I get a chance to set up Rest in Peace, that's really good. Is Rest in Peace even the get here? Like, they could just Echo right now. They have... Manipulated through the deafening silence to the point where they can echo right now, but then they have to end the turn. And echo shuffles, so I can't like enlighten tutor and draw the thing that got echoed. Alright, went with Lotus Petal instead of Echo this turn. Big moves for Enlightened Tutor. Big Enlightened Tutor hours. Uh is Trinisphere or Oh, Court of Grace kind of slaps here. I could get Ethersworn Canonist. Court of Grace. Rest in peace. All of these things are pretty good. The Echo chilling in hand over there, I kind of like Court of Grace for its ability to actually win the game. Yeah, sign me up for a taste of that. Like, knowing that they have to pass the turn at least once, pretty spicy. And I'm not going to tap Ancient Tomb. Like, tapping Ancient Tomb would give me a chance to draw Orm's Chant off the Monarch trigger in the end step, but two life could matter a lot and didn't draw the thing anyway. Yeah, I just think that applying damage quickly to my opponent is going to be a better plan in this game than another lock piece. All right, they're continuing to tie up those diamonds. Get my first angel. Oh, cannonist. And guess what cannonist is? It's a creature, so I can cast both of them. Bang, bang. It's getting ugly, folks. Big chunks coming next turn. It's time for my opponent to do something here. And we got the concession! Undefeated versus Storm Strategies, and defeated by everything else. That's kind of interesting, though, I guess we never really did get Lantex and Scroll Rack pumping at the same time. We never did that thing, which was important to our plan against Fair Decks. I only played three Enlightened Tutor, because I generally don't like that sort of effect in my decks. I thought I could get away with it a little light, but... I guess with the card selection available and card draw available in the deck, you probably just want to max out on that. Probably want to max out on Karn as well. Like, that's how you actually finish games. 
Like, I think for E Tutor, for Rest in Peace, for Karn is probably better. So, if we lose a Solitude, a Plains, and probably a Wrath of God, that gives us the full four rips, four tutors, and four Karn, which is also a tutor. I certainly have a habit of when I'm building non blue decks, building them like they're blue decks. Like all of my, it is a, a weakness I know that I have, which is I, I build and sideboard. Like when I'm building a deck from scratch that doesn't have Ponder and Brainstorm in it, I put numbers in it that make sense in Ponder and Brainstorm decks. Like, oh, I'll just find that when I need it. But that's not how mono white works. And when somebody, when folks send me white and like goblins or uh, death and taxes or whatever, I also tend to sideboard like that. Uh, Pox, I do the same sort of thing. Like, I know that is a gap in my game that I'm conscious of and victim of it here. Just maximize the most important cards in your deck and then you'll draw them more. As far as the Enlightened Tutor package goes, like, you could put Moat in this deck, but most creatures in Legacy fly these days. You could put Humility in the deck, but that's just like another four mana thing, and you have multiple four mana ways to win the game already. I don't want to be glutted at the top end. You could splash a color, like red for Blood Moon. That would have come up multiple times. Zach specifically asked me not to build a uh, blue-white energy field control deck. That's another way you could go with the deck, but Zach wanted to see something that wasn't soft to Pyroblast, because Pyroblast is everywhere, and... Hiding behind Energy Field is a, a big ask in present-day Legacy. I think I would want more Armageddon in the sideboard. Either that or do the Trinisphere thing in the main deck that I originally built towards and then backed off of. Like, maybe that's a better way to go. Like, if we turn Solitude, Isochron Scepter, and maybe one of the Orms chants, like, Chant gets a lot worse without Scepter. Okay, Solitude, Scepter, and Orem's Chant take a break and give me three Trinospheres in the main. We don't get to play Chalice of the Void because of the Enlightened Tutor, Land Tax, all of that is really important. We can't lock out our own game plan that way. If you trigger Land Tax even once, Mox Diamond is a treasure, and if you don't trigger Land Tax, it starts to become kind of a liability. There's not a lot of card draw in the deck. I think playing for a lockout early on makes sense. Like You want to be able to test your opponent's answers and then deliver something unbeatable. Ghostly Prison's kind of cool, but you're not a mana denial deck without the Armageddon. Yeah, maybe Ghostly Prison just doesn't make sense, and I'm going to get the fourth Trinisphere into the main deck. You can still tutor for Ghostly Prison if you want it. This deck isn't super reliable with Ensnaring Bridge. I knew that when I put it in. Like, in the card package is one thing, but when you have to draw it, like, if you trigger land tags even once, Ensnaring Bridge becomes a huge question mark. I was also tempted to put Lodestone Golem in this deck. I've been trying so hard to put Lodestone Golem into decks lately, and it's just always a punish. But if you're already a Trinisphere deck, Lodestone Golem isn't really adding the cost to anything post Trinisphere. Lodestone Golem and Trinisphere also incentivize your opponent to play out lands, which triggers land tax. If we cut Ghostly Prison, Wrath of God, we could get two Logies in here. And the Orm's Chan is starting to get, look worse the more I mess with this deck. And Ancient Tomb starting to look better. Alright, I'm going to put a fourth Ancient Tomb in the deck. I'm cutting all the Orm's Chants. We saw some cool lines with that, but I don't think it's the way forward. Four Lodestone Golems in here. And 20 land supporting a Mox Diamond strategy, but the land tax is also part of the mix. And Chrome Mox is another thing you can do here. I played a Pox League recently where Chrome Mox was really bad because Pox needs every single spell that it draws to be a spell. But this deck doesn't really need that. Like the second land tax, not super important. And triggering it twice is a lot of cards, but... Not a huge deal. Sometimes sorts of plowshares is bad. Sometimes you don't need the second rest in peace. I think one Chrome Mox to help support this Trinisphere makes some sense. Okay, I think we have 
we have certainly fundamentally changed the the plan of the deck here. I think it's better. I hope it's better. This is what I'm going with, though, either way. If I were to build a deck around Rest in Peace with no stipulations, it probably would be Blue-White Energy Field. Even though Pyroblast is a part of the format, Rest in Peace is really potent as a standalone card, and then sometimes you get to Energy Field, and sometimes you just don't. It's not a huge deal. But having uh, Brainstorm and Ponder in the deck to support those gluts of lands or like drawing the second Mox Diamond, I think that's really where it shines more than your Wincon being Pyroblastable is getting all the access to all the cantrips is a huge deal. I'm going to leave this where it is, but those are my thoughts. I think the, the cantrips are worth it if you really want to play a Rest in Peace Helm deck. That may or may not be a land tax deck, though. So uh, your mileage may vary. This was my attempt at Mono White Death and or Death and Taxes, LOL. Mono White Land Tax. Wrong tax deck. Zach, thanks for the challenge. Everybody, thanks for watching. Storm Wizards, watch your back out there because I'm at, I'm in these streets with Mono White that apparently only feasts on Storm. Everybody, check out the links in the video description for the Discord, the Patreon, Coalesce Apparel. All that stuff. Check it out. I'll see you next time.